a geotechnical construction podcast with humor, community engagement, and so much more. This is The Site Report. Today, I'm joined by Mike and Matt, who work in our legal department here at Keller. Mike and Matt, thank you both for joining us today. I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about what your day-to-day looks like and what it's really like being part of our legal team, because I feel like a lot of people at Keller, they may know kind of what you do, but really not what goes on behind the scenes or the really deep dive into what your day-to-day looks like. So I guess, Matt, we can start with you. I'd just like to hear a little bit about, you know, how you kind of started at Keller. Was this, you know, your career goal from day one of graduating college. Love to hear a little bit about your background and how you came to work at Keller. Uh, sure. No, and no, I appreciate it. And so uh, to to answer your question initially, I did not uh, grow up wanting to be a lawyer. I wasn't <laughs> sure what I wanted to be. Uh, a myriad of things, including playing for the Buffalo Bills, uh, becoming a professional golfer were probably <laughs> higher on my list than um, than being a lawyer, but uh, in an undergrad, I did kind of gravitate towards more political science and mm-hmm. history type courses, sure. uh, the discourse surrounding, um, you know, events and, and politics and things like that. And the natural segue to me at the time um, really felt like, you know, law school was a good option for me. Um, I you know, as far as construction, I, I grew up in a family. Uh, my father owns a, a millwork company in Buffalo, New York, where I'm from. Um, and so I had kind of grown up in a construction environment, construction family. Uh, so marrying the law and construction seemed like a natural fit to me. Mm-hmm. And so my my 1L year or first year of law school, <clears throat> um, I actually took an internship with a construction litigation firm in the Baltimore area that I ultimately ended up working for full time after law school. So really kind of jumped into construction litigation right away, working through law school and then um, early on in my career. I was there for about five years. And and I will say I did relatively quickly figure out I wanted to be in-house for a construction company. Those jobs are not, at least in my experience, and I'd love to hear from Mike, but they're, they don't grow on trees. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the law in, in particular is a pretty small world, especially when you start talking just construction. So uh, I took my time and waited for the right opportunity to pop up. And about five years into my legal career, uh, an opportunity opened up with Keller. And I actually interviewed with Mike and David Peitch. And um, that was nearly 10 years ago. Wow, that's great. Whole gang's back together now. <laughs> yeah. And Mike, did you kind of have a similar experience to Matt or was yours a little bit, your path was a little bit different? Yeah, um, my path was actually a, a bit different. Okay. Um, you know, but I think um, actually every attorney here in Keller's legal department, uh, a bit of a different path. Each took their own path and uh, ended up here at, at Keller. Um, but my path was that being a lawyer is actually a second career for me. So my undergraduate is, uh, degree is in civil engineering. Out of school, I started work for a large um, general contractor doing 100% public works jobs here in Maryland. And I started as a field engineer and I worked my way up through the ranks to a senior project manager. And so I spent about 10 years managing uh, construction projects, roads, dams, bridges, uh, heavy civil public works type uh, construction. I left the general contractor and went to work as a owner's rep, um, a construction manager, again here in Maryland, where I represented public works owners for large construction projects, Maryland Port Authority, the Maryland State Highway Administration, now the DOT, Maryland Toll Authority. And uh, while I was working as a construction manager, I met my friend Brian, who was going to law school at night. Uh, he was also a civil engineer. And, you know, I talked to him and, and said that I was thinking about the next thing in my career, mm-hmm. whether I should get my PE or whether maybe an MBA. And Brian is the one who said, I think you ought to try being a lawyer. And he said, you're smart, you're uh, organized, and you like to fight. 
<laughs> so I said, well, yes, to, to those things. <laughs> um, but I said, I, I just wasn't sure, you, you know, nobody in my family was ever a lawyer. Sure. And uh, although there were construction folks and my, my dad was a professional engineer, civil engineer. And um, Brian made a bet with me. He said, look, um, I'll bet you 10 bucks that if you, if you do a year at law school that you're going to love it. So I took the bet and uh, I went to law school. And I have to admit, I, I paid Brian his 10 bucks within the first six weeks of law school. I, I loved it so much. Um, <laughs> and it, it just felt like a good fit. And so um, after I graduated from law school, like Matt, I spent five years at a uh, at a law firm practicing as an associate in the construction litigation department. So I represented owners, GCs, subcontractors, in construction disputes, both in state court and in federal court. And my friend Brian had moved on to be in-house counsel here at Keller, and he's the one that brought me on board here. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in private practice about five years when he gave me a call and said that Keller was looking for in-house counsel. And like Matt said, these you know in-house counsel opportunities for construction companies are few and far between. And I came and interviewed and mostly be honest with you, Lauren, it was because I missed being part of a construction company. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, you know, for for folks who get construction in their blood, it, it's hard to do anything else, um, both the, 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 the great parts of it and the huge headaches that come with it. But, um, you know, once you get it in your blood, it's hard to get it out. Seems like a very interesting just like jump to, I mean, did you have, did you have trouble adjusting from sort of like starting in the field and being out there to, you know, going to law school and then you're, you know, you're kind of removed from the field. So you're dealing with the classes, you're, you got the textbooks going on. I mean, was that a hard adjustment right. for you? At yeah. First? Yeah. It definitely was not, it definitely was not the easiest, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, for anybody who's gone back to school, I think I was facing the the same sort of tribulations, um, you know, trying to get back into that academic mode um, was not mm -hmm. easy. But I think one of the things that absolutely helped was that I knew that when I graduated that I wanted to practice construction law. Mm -hmm. And so that was a huge factor in motivating me uh, in law school and uh, making the adjustment. To be honest with you, the, the, the hardest adjustment in my career has been uh, private practice. Um, it's a very different world uh, when you're working for a law firm and representing clients. And it's it's experience that I would not I, I would not give up or change for anything in the world. Those five years I spent practicing law, I learned so much. And obviously that experience um, has been brought forward here to Keller, where I've been um, for the last 15 years. Yeah, that's great. And I will say um, kudos to both of you. I, Matt, I kind of have a similar, I was a um, political science major in college. I thought about law school for maybe a semester. And then I was like, you know what, this is way above me. We are going to uh, not do this. So I kind of pivoted a bit. But I do do commend you guys because it is, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of hours, a lot of nights that you do not get sleep. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure you kind of paid your dues at the beginning. But I mean, that is really interesting to hear about how you say, you know, the jobs at you know, construction companies are kind of few and far between. They're not, you know, all out there. You're not picking from, you know, a hundred jobs at, you know, different companies. So what has made it so unique or I guess specific to working at Keller that people may not realize versus maybe working for another law firm or another company in general? It's a company environment that, you know, quite frankly, at least here, uh, and just to use round round numbers, construction companies in the in the Maryland area with in-house legal departments. I mean, it's it numbers probably in the double digits. Um, whereas if you were to look at law firms or frankly solo practitioners um, throughout the state, it, it just as a as a small smattering. I mean, that has to be in the thousands. Now, I'm sure I'll get fact checked on this and be proven wrong, <laughs> but I, that that that's just my my gut feeling. So. You're, you're taking and, and when you're taking the law firm environment or, or solo practitioners or whatever the case may be, a lot of those uh, entities or, or solo practitioners are practicing 
in other types of types of law, other areas of the law, uh, construction is just a small piece of a very large pie. So you're already looking at a small, smaller piece, and then you're looking at an even smaller piece when you're talking in-house departments mm -hmm. uh, versus law firms that may dabble in construction or, frankly, handle just construction like the like the firm I worked at sure. uh, before I came to Keller. So you're really looking at a, a small pond to go fishing in, and so the the opportunities are are rare um but they're also very unique and i think that's what was appealing to me being in private practice was great for for many reasons not the least of which was just being thrown in a fire and having to learn both uh you know in the courtroom on your feet and then also you know with partners and having to to learn how to work with them and associates senior associates uh and then clients more importantly and probably most importantly clients how how to interact with them um, because we are at its base, you know, a, a service industry. And so transitioning to in-house meant, okay, instead of working for a firm where we may service 500 clients, I'm working with a company on the same team with the same client. We're all mm -hmm. on the same team. Yes, I'm servicing people within the confines of the company, However, we're all on the same team. So their victories are my victories. My victories are their victories. It's it's a team environment. And that really, sure. uh, you know, growing up being a, a rower, you know, I was just one of the, you know, ultimate team sports. I had to rely on, you know, seven other people in a boat. It wasn't just mm -hmm. me. And, um, you know, that really appealed to me. For Keller, coming to Keller, um, I just like help building stuff. So, you know, I, I, I like to, I, I like to be part of the team that's constructing things. And, you know, Keller um, really uh, allows us to do that. You know, you can imagine that for a construction company, there are different ways to set up your in-house counsel department, right? You know, some in-house counsel departments are set up in a way that they, you know, they shop out uh, a lot of services to outside counsel. Um, you know, some are set up um with sort of firewalls between the attorneys and the folks in the field mm -hmm. um some of them are set up in a way that the attorneys may deal with the folks in the field but only on one topic so for instance there's a group of in-house counsel that just negotiates contracts or a group that just litigates and so another part of coming to keller that was so appealing was that our practice both allows us to be part of the team that is constructing the work, and it also allows us to uh, do the full breadth of um, of legal work uh, mm -hmm. for for the company. So it's been you know for, so that part is just it's been great, and uh, yeah, it's it's um, something different every day. I'll say that definitely like to touch on that because I'm sure obviously you know with any job you have you're probably not going to have that same you know same day so I can imagine that you know obviously yes you're working with the same team within Keller but I'm sure each job is different I'm sure you're negotiating contracts that are different I'm sure you know each job has its own set of challenges so I mean talk a little bit about what your day-to-day -day looks like how many obstacles are you facing a day are you going through paperwork all the time. Um, so I just love to hear about, you know, how they're different, how they may be the same. Are you fed up with some some of the days? Um, so just talk a little bit about that. Sure. I, I will say, um, I'll start by saying that I think the notion that a lot of people have about attorneys is developed through watching movies and TV shows mm -hmm. where it looks like attorneys spend a lot of their time in courtrooms um, with very dramatic uh, cases and very dramatic results and that, you know, that's how they're spending their days. Sure. Um, that's a part of what we do, certainly. <laughs> but, you know, really, there's a lot, a lot uh, um, more to the job than uh, being in court or, mm -hmm. or being in, in, in arbitration. And, you know, for, for me, my typical, I think, spread of work is, you know, we get involved in negotiating contracts. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. We get involved um, in actually supporting the folks in the field real time as work is being constructed. So, and then finally, we spend quite a bit of time in dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we all understand the negotiating contracts part. 
Um, you know, we help put together proposals. We help review bids at times. We then review contracts that are offered to us from from clients and help negotiate those out. And um, I'll let Matt talk more on on that. Um, but as far as the real time project support, that's a, certainly a, a large part of our practice. And what that means is that for the folks in the field that you know if you have a phone you have a lawyer um so if you know if they come across a issue that they think they need to get legal support on then um they email us they call us they contact us in some way and and say hey i've got this issue and i could really use your advice your counsel your help uh dealing with and so you know th that's part of the real fun of the job right because Every day, um, you come into something different. There's there's an email from somebody doing a job out in California, or uh, a phone call from somebody building a job down in Florida, and you know trying to help the folks in the field, um, you know, in constructing the project is a huge um, a huge part and a huge thrill as far as I'm concerned with, with the job dispute resolution. Um, you know, not everything goes right all the time. Um, we on all construction. Know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, sometimes, uh, it requires, uh, some help from legal and, um, you know, and that's not, that's, that's really not a function of Keller per se. Um, every contract that we enter into, every construction contract has a dispute resolution clause, standard standard um, clause in, in every contract. Of course, the details of the dispute resolution clause are very different depending if you're doing a public works job or a private job and so forth. But every contract um, anticipates uh, the possibility, at least, of a dispute. And so... Um, you know, that needs to be navigated and, and helped with and hopefully uh, resolved in, in some sort of fair way. That's uh, also a, a part of what we do. And obviously, um, as ex-litigators, all the attorneys have at least some litigation experience. Uh, that's hugely helpful once you get into the dispute resolution realm. Keller is headed to Los Angeles for Geo Congress 2023. We are so excited to learn more about sustainable infrastructure solutions from the ground up. Make sure to stop by booth number 313 to talk with us about how we can help with your next project. And as always, you can visit our website for more information at www.keller-na.com. See you in LA. Sounds like you guys have to always be by your phones and by your email. <laughs> <laughs> no two days are the same. And, and quite frankly, no two issues seem to be the same in part because there's always some factual nuance that happens to be a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the law itself, particularly in construction, has has matured, but not nearly at a pace that you would think we would need to uh, continually update our, our way of thinking, you know, weekly or monthly. Uh, certainly things do come down um, through different court systems and the like. So you, you, you have some continuing legal education, but quite a bit of the the nuance really just revolves around the facts, mm -hmm. uh, what jurisdiction you're in, what team you're dealing with, uh, what general contractor or, or client you might be dealing with. But as far as the the work itself, you know, obviously we're, we're on the front end quite a bit or like to be on the front end quite a bit with the project team negotiating and, and handling the contracts to try and, you know, best position ourselves to not have those fights down the line. Mm -hmm. And then if we do, that we're in a better position uh, within the confines of that of that fight or dispute. And then, you know, quite a bit of our time, as Mike said, and, and where I really also enjoy the time is on the acute project issues. And that runs the gamut. Uh, obviously, there's there's the big claims that everyone kind of gravitates towards because mm -hmm. they have the dollar sign in front of it and, you know, many zeros after it, uh, you know, sure. the big, big contracts with the big different site condition claims, uh, inefficiencies, delays, things like that. And, and certainly there's, I'm drawn to that for, for a myriad of reasons. But then there's also the, the little issues, you know, Mike might remember this. We had a, a field engineer frantically call us, this is, my gosh, probably five years ago now, um, out west. 
he showed up to the job site at about 6.30 in the morning, and at the access road into this job site, there was a BMW parked on the street right in front of the job site. It's the only way we could get in and out. What he did was he made a decision to try and reach the owner of, of the car, couldn't find the person, so he had the car towed. That allowed us to work for the day with some very expensive equipment and personnel, as opposed to just sitting around not being able to get into the job site. Well, it turns out in this particular jurisdiction, he could be held criminally and civilly liable um, for having this car towed uh, unlawfully. So he calls us up worried that he's going to go to jail. He was not going to go to jail. I mean, Mike and I let him think that, um, you know, just as a lesson learned. However, you know, the reality was it was a a max $500 fine. Uh, We had very good relationships with local council in the area and we were were pretty much able to make the thing go away. And, and, you know, from a time is money standpoint, the fuel engineer made the right decision. And, you know, at least as as Keller is concerned, certainly not as uh, the car owner is concerned. But, you know, it was just a a very random issue that, you know, we had had to do some digging into, had to, had to seek some local advice and turns out it was fine. But, not something I woke up that day thinking I was going to to look into, right? Sure, sure. And it keeps, keeps you on your toes. So, I mean, what do you think are some of the great skills that, you know, the rest of your team has and that also each of you have that kind of gets you through dealing with these issues? I mean, I know you have to be obviously problem solvers. I know you probably have to think quickly on your feet. So, I mean, what are some of these skills that you think that you possess along with the rest of your team that really makes you guys just a great team for the company to really go out and kind of tackle these issues? We have to keep um, our eye on you know, what what the goal is for the legal department and then let our skills further or, or help us achieve that goal. And really the goal of the of the legal department is to use our uh, construction experience and our legal acumen to reach uh, fair results for the company. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have to have, you know, both you have to be fair minded um, you know, that's certainly a skill, right? You all, but you also have to be able to effectively deal with conflict because no matter how fair, uh, minded we may be, that doesn't mean that the folks that on the other side of the table are necessarily sure. minded. So, you know, you have to be able to advocate effectively for, for the end. And <clears throat> I'll tell you, I think one of the examples, Matt and I had a, had a case, a job that we were working on down in Texas. And basically, we went in there to install anchors in an existing dam, concrete dam, right? Mm -hmm. So you drill the hole through the dam and then into the underlying rock, and then you install these long anchors. Then you tension those anchors um, from the top of the dam to help keep the dam in place, right? In this case, the dam ended up being like Swiss cheese. There were so many holes and voids and, and issues inside this old dam. And uh, under our contract, Keller was requ- um, was promised payment for dealing with those types of voids. And so, you know, the first step really was in dealing with this was, look, you know, we need to be fair minded about it as far as uh, getting compensated for that work. Right. We're, we're not trying. We don't, we're not out to gouge anybody. <clears throat> we're not out to gouge anybody. You know, we're not out to get more than than what we deserve and what we're owed. So um, so we proceed that way. And we're at a meeting. Matt and I are at a meeting with the owner and the owner uh, says that he doesn't owe us a dime. Um, This is somehow all our fault that there's holes in the dam. Um, And, you know, that and, and oh, by the way, maybe there's not no holes in the dam. Um, maybe that we're just making it up. I mean, it was just ridiculous, right? Yeah. Taking a completely adversarial, ridiculous position. Mm-hmm. One of the things that helped reach a resolution in that case and, and get Keller paid was that Matt and I had talked to our field team about gathering certain evidence mm-hmm. uh, in support of the claim. And one of the things we did learn was we had the team run a camera down one of our drill holes. So you're talking mm-hmm. about a borehole that's, you know, or four inches big, so you can get a camera down there. And we lower, had him lower a camera down with a light on it. And you can imagine this camera going down this borehole, and then it gets down to the lower part of the dam, and you start to see the voids, right? Mm-hmm. And you start to see, I mean, big voids, like 
like voids you could park a car in. Oh, wow. And then all of a sudden you see like a fish go swimming <laughs> through the camera lens inside this dam. So, you know, that was a wonderful thing. We, we ended up calling the, the case the fish in the dam case. Um, <laughs> and th- that video made it pretty tough for the owner to to take the position that they were taking. And, and you know, at that point, we we presented more evidence, including the, the fish in the dam video, and we're able to get the owner to move off center and actually get us paid fairly. So, mm-hmm. you know, so the kind of skills that that support that sort of a result, right? Again, fair mindedness, um, the ability to advocate, um, you know, the ability to to um, sit across the table from somebody and continue to um, uh, try to achieve a result despite uh, the folks on the other side of the table, um, not always acting fairly. Um, so. That was, uh, I think those are the kind of skills that uh, that support the goal of the legal department. Matt, sure. do you remember that case? Oh, I do. And, and I wasn't <laughs> sure exactly what type of fish it is, but I like to think it was a gold fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, man. Sorry, I, I'm not prone to puns often, but I am I am a father <laughs> to a five-year-old, so I find myself making more and more awful jokes. But um, That was a good one. <laughs> but in any event, no, I do remember it. And, Mike, and Mike's right. You know, I think one of the, and that reminds me of, of something that I think every attorney in our office has. But, you know, you need to be inquisitive um, and, and willing to to do to do the, the heavy lifting and digging into into project files. Um, you know, we've if you've ever been on a, a SharePoint site for any of our projects, you realize that there's it, the files are voluminous. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's all evidence. And at some point, you know, if you are are willing to do the work and be inquisitive about it and think about things a bit differently, in addition to, in, to the regular boots on the ground thinking that we do with the team, you know, I think you do a, a, a great service to the company with respect to, you know, honing our arguments and, and best arming the team to work through the, the the acute issues with the client. And it's not all adversarial. You know, certainly many of our our uh, relationships with clients are, are quite good. And you may have a situation uh, in, in contrast to the one Mike just kind of spoke about where you have a client saying, hey, you know, what's going on here, Keller? Can you help us figure this out? And and obviously there's a technical aspect to that, which is beyond my pale. Uh, and that's why we have great technical folks who manage these projects and engineers and all that. But we work with them and, and maybe there's a, in addition to the technical, there's a great contractual argument that we can help put forward with the client to help us both out with the owner, so to speak, if, it's, if we're working with a general contractor. So it's not all adversarial. A lot of it is mm-hmm. um, you know, working within those relationships to help better the project and and frankly reach like mike said fair and equitable results um sure. you know it's not all about hitting grand slams all the time uh if you can hit a whole bunch of singles and and get on base and you know end up winning the game you know that's good too mm-hmm. yeah and i think that that's uh, you know a, matt brings up a good point because you know one of the skills that you definitely need um in our in our practice is the ability to both look at things in a very detailed way, whether that's a document or testimony or a contract, because words matter. And, you know, um, one word this way or one word that way can can mean something different. So you need to be able to focus very, very in a very detailed way. But you also need to be able to pull way back and look at a situation from, you know, a 30,000 foot view. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the, I think, strengths of our legal department is because we have so much experience here at Keller, that that institutional knowledge and institutional experience really pays off. Sure. Because, you know, Lauren, what's interesting is, you you know, in some ways you can look at our practice as a circle. So you've got contract negotiations, right? So mm-hmm. the, the start of the job. Then the next step is actually constructing the job. Things may, may happen. Mm-hmm. Then you have dispute resolution. And that at the end of the dispute resolution, you tie back into the next contract, right? Because the things that we learn in the legal department during um, uh, during the dispute resolution process 
or closing out a contract are valuable knowledge that we bring forward to the next contract, right? To make sure that, again, um, we we achieve fair and equitable contracts with our clients. So, you know, it, it's on some of these big projects, especially when you're negotiating a contract, you know, you're not just looking at this word or that word. You're also thinking about the contract from all of your experience, you know, all of your um, uh, issues that you've de- contract issues that you dealt with in the past to help inform you about what will work best uh, for both the client and Keller on the next contract. Always learning. I will say that. I feel like that is a common theme here. Everybody I've talked to has been on, you know, the show so far, they just seems like you're always learning something new, which I think is huge because you don't want to kind of stay still. You always want to kind of grow your knowledge and, you know, expand because that's when, you know, new ideas are formed. You may think of something super creative, super helpful. That'll really kind of boost the team and just really add, you know, that next step get you to that next level. So I think that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we, we see it all the time. I mean, we we looked at a contract not too long ago. Matt and I worked on a contract not too long ago that was amazingly complex. It was, you know, six or seven parties um, trying to uh, remedy a uh, building settlement uh, out west. And it really took, you know, all of the all of our knowledge, uh, experience to really think about, you know, how can we make this work in a, in a way for everybody. Right. And, you know, that was something like I've never negotiated uh, at the time. I'd never negotiated or thought about a contract involving six different entities and liability associated with it and the kind of promises that needed to be made in the contract. And, and so all of the work that, you know, all of our experience and work that we had done up to that point, um, allowed us to, um, you know, put together, I think a very decent, um, a very decent and fair contract. So yeah, constantly learning. Um, you can't, you can't stop. Otherwise, Lauren, you just keep making the same mistakes and that's a bad thing. (laughs) Yep, exactly. We don't, we don't want that. (laughs) No, that's exactly right, Mike. I, and, and, you know, it's easy to, especially with how, quickly things move and how many projects the, the company works on, it's it's very easy to try and say, okay, I assume that that this is this situation with this client in this jurisdiction with this fact patterns going to result very similarly to this, you know, issue with this client. And that's really not the case. I, it, it may be close, but, sure. you know, assuming that things are just going to, to have the same result and not necessarily taking that next step and, and and saying, hey, let's dig in a little bit. Let's make sure we're thinking about this correctly. Let's work with, you know, engineering or let's work with the project team and think about this, you know, like you said, maybe a little bit uh, innovatively, oftentimes is a bit of a different result. And you need to step back and think about those things. And, and it is fast paced, but what I do like about being here in particular is you still do have time on your hand. There do have to be quick decisions oftentimes with uh, the project team on the project level, but then there's many opportunities where we can take a couple days, do some research, talk to some colleagues, dig into the file and provide a more you know coherent analysis. And you know that's not always the case. It certainly wasn't always the case in private practice. Um, so I do I do appreciate that here. Both of you obviously are very successful in what you've been doing. I mean, the Keller team as a whole is extremely successful. I mean, how do you think that you've had any mentors along the way, or men- maybe even a colleague that has really kind of guided you, or just that influential figure that has kind of shaped you know how you practice today, how you really approach things? Has there been anybody? you know, in your career up to this point that's kind of influenced you like that? Three three people come to mind, if you will. Mm-hmm. So the first person uh, that was a mentor to me, Lauren, was my very first superintendent when I was a field engineer. Mm-hmm. So I had, um, his name was Joe, and Joe was a grizzled old superintendent. <laughs> and um, he was very tough, um, but I, I have to say, 80% of what I know about construction, I learned in my first two or three years as a field engineer working with mm-hmm. Joe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Joe quickly realized that 
as a as a graduate engineer um, that I may have known a few things about engineering, but I, I'd never worked construction, heavy construction. Mm -hmm. And so he quickly, first of all, he said a few choice words about the HR department that hired a engineer that didn't know anything about construction. Um, <laughs> but after that, um, he kind of took me under his wing in a way, in a you know tough love, and um, you know really showed me the ropes of heavy construction and how things get built. So um, he was a mentor, if you will. I think if if you know you were to use that word in front of Joe, he would bristle at it but um he, he absolutely uh he absolutely was a mentor mm -hmm. in in learning that and then you know as far as as far as here at keller i'd say two mentors uh david peich our mm -hmm. chief legal officer has been a great mentor in my last 15 years um sure. david is super smart um you know he is not just a lawyer but he's also a pe he also mm -hmm. has an mba you know a real underachiever <laughs> um, so, so David has just been phenomenal in helping me. And then I'd say my third mentor, if you will, are the other attorneys I work with. Uh, certainly Matt has been, you know, a tr tr tremendous in being able to share ideas in being able to help guide certain things because each of us, um, as much as we know about construction and as much as we know about the law also are humble enough to know that we don't know everything. Sure. And that, you know, we need we need some um, guidance sometimes we need some help sometimes. And all the attorneys here in the legal department work together in that sense. I think that we all sort of cross mentor each other in a way. Um, but certainly, you know, one of Matt's strengths is the is his private practice experience. Um, you know, that has been tremendously helpful in some of the cases I've dealt with in, in talking with Matt and getting some ideas from him about ways to proceed. For me in particular at Keller on the legal side, it's mm -hmm. David and Mike, and there's no question yeah. about that. I was, when I, when I first started here, I, I guess my time was probably split about a third of the time with David, a third of the time with Mike, and a okay. third of the time with Brian Wood at the time, uh, who's now with Smith Curry and, and still a friend of the, the company. but. So I, I had quite a bit of exposure to three different personalities. And then, you know, ultimately a lot of the work kind of went towards Mike. And so I, I got to spend my first many years here really working with Mike quite a bit and David. Mm -hmm. And that was tremendous for me. And what I think was one of the great things I learned pretty quickly was I could be my own person. Mm -hmm. I, it, the mentorship wasn't this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And this is how you do the third thing. And, that, mm -hmm. and that's how it's done. That's not the case, and certainly not within our department. It was yeah. more of, this is how I look at this. This is how I approach this. I've dealt with this before. I've never dealt with this before, but this is how I would look at it. Mm -hmm. And I was allowed to, you know, quite a bit of leash to just kind of be my own person and, you know, develop my own way of handling things. And I think that was tremendous for me from a professional standpoint. Uh, you know, when I was in private practice, I had some great mentors, but... Uh, the mentorship was a bit different. It was certainly mm -hmm. a bit more rigid. Um, and some of that was necessitated just by, you know, a partner. It was their client. It was their file. I had sure. to kind of get in lockstep with the way they wanted to approach things. And that was that. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot, but I wasn't given a ton of latitude to sure. kind of develop my own way of, of being a lawyer. And I, I really do think that that has been something that I've been allowed to do here for the past nearly 10 years and, and something I feel like I've, I've been able to do and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, to Mike's point, influence and, and help others within our department and certainly uh, learning from everyone within our department. That's what's so great uh, that we're all, you know, from different walks of life with different life experiences, different legal experiences. Uh, you know, Mike and David were both engineers. Mike has mm -hmm. the quite a bit of construction, in-field construction experience. Um, you know, Bill Martin was a claims consultant with international experience in Doha, et cetera. So, I mean, we just, you know, we have a lot of great people to learn from uh, if you're willing to be a sponge. And yeah, so that's we, huge. I appreciate that. I think, you know, one of the other, um, one of the other things that's sort of important to um, think about is, so in to make all this work at Keller, the 
uh, you cannot have an, a big ego. So mm-hmm. Matt, Matt will back me up on this because we were both we both came from private practice. So I worked for a large law firm, Matt, for a, one that was a bit smaller. But oh my gosh, Lauren, can you imagine the egos <laughs> on some of the partners at these law firms? I, I can, mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that part was kind of like TV, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they had some. I mean, some really just tremendous egos. And so, you know, one of the things here at Keller is that, man, when you walk in the door, like you better check your ego Mm -hmm. because so many smart people work here at Keller. Um, Everybody that um, I deal with in engineering, that I deal with in finance, that I deal with, you know, in your department, Lauren, um, Mm -hmm. these are very, very smart people. And, you know, if you if you walk in with an ego then you're just not going to be able to interact in a way that helps you learn things from all those people. So many people here are willing to help and teach folks um, what uh, they need to know about certain things. Certainly from the legal department, you know, we uh, often need help with the technical parts, with the engineering parts. And just being able to go to engineering or go to the, some of the project teams and just say, I'm not exactly sure from a technical standpoint how this works. And I need to know because sure. if I'm going to stand up in front of an arbitrator or I'm going to stand up in front of a judge, I better know my stuff um, is just, um, you know, you better check your ego to be able to do that. And it's one of the refreshing things. I, I still think about it, frankly. It's one of the refreshing things every time I walk in the door. Um, that, you know, folks here are just so smart and so willing to help. So, um, yeah, and, and I'll, be, I'll be honest, I, I you know, we, we still have a little bit of an ego, Lauren, <laughs> in the legal department. I mean, you have to, if you're going to stand, you got to, you know, when you're standing in front of an arbitrator well, or a judge, sure. right, mm-hmm. like you got to believe that like everybody wants to hear what you have to say. Right. But that's in a, in front of an arbitrator or a judge. Um, it's a little different here in the office, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I really enjoyed listening to the ins and outs of what you guys do. I think it's so interesting, and I think a lot of people are going to find it very interesting, too, because, again, I know, you know, with color, everybody knows what we do in the field, but I think the day-to-day for some of the office folks and just who makes up our company um, is just so different, and it's really great to hear, you know, what both of you had to say. So I really do appreciate you taking time to talk with us today. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. And that about wraps it up for our show today. Thank you so so much for listening. We hope you were able to learn a little bit more about the people who make our company so great. And as always, make sure to follow us on social media on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can always visit our website for more information at www.keller-na.com. 